Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Max and welcome back to a brand new video on this channel where today I'm going to be showing you guys the basics of the Discord API and showing you guys how to send a Discord message using Python requests. So yeah, let's get straight into the video. So essentially what you're going to need for this video is you're, all you're going to need is a Discord account because you're going to need an account to send the message with obviously. So uh, yeah. So to get started, we're going to need to get this thing called a token. Basically, a token is a unique code used for every single Discord account. Um, you can use it to access it using a Discord self bot or the Discord API. So yeah, let me show you guys how to get that. So there's multiple different ways of getting it, but make sure you're in your browser and you're signed in to discord.com. As you can see up here, it says open Discord, so I am signed in. And the easiest way to get it is going up here, pressing the three dots, pressing more tools and pressing Control shift i or the Developer Tools button. Control shift i is a shortcut, obviously. Um, from here, you're going to want to go to Application, and you're going to you want to go to Local Storage and press Discord.com here, and you're going to want to press Toggle Device Toolbar. It's going to look something like this, and from here, you can just type in the token in the filter box right here, and if that doesn't show up, you can um, press Control f and type in a token and it's going to show your token right here um, it should look something similar to this um, obviously not the exact same because as i said it is unique for every discord account but you're just going to want to copy this and make sure it says 59 characters selected because that is how long each token is and from here we're going to create a new python file so we can actually get started with this so we're going to go to new file let me create this on my second monitor um, I'm just going to call it tutorial. Okay, so we have our Python file here, and from now we we are just gonna post or paste a token right here. Um, so as you can see here, we have our token set as a variable, so we don't need this anymore. And I can show you guys another way to actually get your token. So log into Discord here, open Discord. Um, Essentially, anything you do in Discord uses uses your token, so you can disable that. Um, go into here, and if you were to type anything in Discord, for example, just a dot, you can see here, if I go to this messages post request, um, it's going to use the exact same token. It's the authorization key right here. As you can see, it's the same exact thing. It starts with OD and ends with KY. So... Um, yeah, so as you can see, it is used for authorization and uh, it is used in every single thing you do in um, Discord. But um, from here, we're, we want to actually create or send a message in Discord. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called send message. And um, you guys can see how easy it is to actually send a message. So um, for the send message uh, function, we want to have three different variables. We want our token, um, the channel ID, and our message. So we can, uh, let me actually get rid of this and put it outside the function so it doesn't cause any problems. Um, but so we need three different variables. So the token to authorize the um, sending of the message the channel id so we can uh, select which channel to send the message in and then the uh, actual message itself um, so as you can see up here if we actually go to the message that we actually sent this is like similar for every message that you send in a discord server um, you can see the request url and that is a post request meaning it is posting data to their server um, so we're going to actually want to copy this and we're going to set it as the URL here. And if you guys are wondering what this ID right here, this is actually the channel ID. So we're going to delete that and we're going to format that into the, or the, the channel ID that we actually use are uh, one of the parameters and put it into the request URL. So um, to actually get a channel URL, if you're on browser, you can just see it up here. This is, uh, wait, this is, here, let me actually see. I believe this is the guild ID, so that's a server ID, and then this is the channel ID. So to actually get it, what we can do is we can go to appearance, we can go to developer mode, and make sure that's enabled. You're going to want to right-click on the channel and press copy ID. This is for... Um, 
the Windows app, uh, obviously. So that is how you get the channel ID. So yeah, so we can just create a variable up here called channel ID and set that to that. Um, but from here, we're gonna wanna make sure we have our URL set. Um, and now what we can actually do is we can create a post request. So let me actually do this. I forgot that we need to import requests and we don't need, we don't need that anymore. Um, but make sure you have requests installed into Python. So import requests right here. So that allows us to send requests to different servers, um, on the internet. So request.post, we're going to put the URL because that's the URL we are posting the information to. And as you can see, this is posting because that is the request um, type that we are actually here. Let me show you. So if we actually send a, another message here, you can actually remember that it is a request, it is the post request method. And um, that does match what we are doing here with our request. So yeah, we can, we, we can delete that message. We don't need it anymore, but um, yeah. So we're gonna set the URL here. Um, we're posting to that URL, then the data. The data is the message that we are sending. Um, so here, let me create two different libraries. So, uh, let me show you guys again here. So basically if we go here to our messages, you can see down here that the dot that we sent is in the content, um, in the, of the library or, um, the request payload. So we can view source here. You can see that the content is the dot and then this is irrelevant. That is the, um, I'm not sure what that is actually. I'm yeah, that's the message ID. I'm pretty sure we can see here actually, if we want to, uh, copy that ID. Hmm. I'm actually not sure what that is, but regardless, that's irrelevant. Um, TTS is false. That is if, for example, we, um, wanted to make it a text to speech message. So Maxi said test. So that's what it actually sounds like. But, um, as you can see here, if we were to go view source here, it shows TTS true. So essentially that's just text to speech. Um, but that's irrelevant in this cause we are not do, um, sending a text to speech message, but, um, if we were to, that would be relevant. So yeah, keep that in mind if you want to be sending text to speech messages, but in this tutorial, we're not going to be, um, but yeah, that is pretty much all you have to do if you want to send a text to speech message. But, um, essentially we're only going to be sending a regular message. So we're going to create a library called data and set the content to the message that, um, the, me or the parameter message that the user inputted. And we're also going to create our header, which is the authorization as I showed you guys earlier. And we're going to set that to our token. So we have the data, which is the content um, of, in the message and the header, which is our authorization. And that is our token. So um, let me actually put this in order just to make it even simpler for you guys. Okay, so we have our URL, our data and our header. So from here, we can set the data equals to data and the header is equal to the header. Whoops. Okay, so um, these are different parameters in the post class of requests. So, or the post function of um, the request library. So basically um, there's data. So you're gonna set the data to whatever library it is. You can even type it like this. So if we wanted to do it like that, you could. But, um, I prefer just to create them, um, just by itself. So if you want to change it easy, you can, but, um, so we're setting the data to this library right here. So it's content is the message. That's the parameter. And then the header is the header. So that is the, this right here setting the authorization to the token that the parameter or the parameter that you input. Um, so from here, this should actually work if we were to actually run the function. So let's do a little test here, shall we? Um, send message 
and then you're gonna put in your token so in my case it is this one right here um, and then the channel ID so that would be this channel ID right here so you put that in um, in this case it doesn't really matter whether it's a string or an integer considering that you're formatting it so there's not gonna be any errors regardless of if it's a string or an integer but um, so yeah we are inputting the channel ID right there and then the message we can which can be anything hello there for example and just in case this does not work we will set this to R and then we're going to print the status code and if it comes out to be in the 200s we should be fine so yeah let's do a little test here see what happens got an unexpected oh my bad <laughs> all right well at least i see what the error is here so basically um it's saying that the request um f or the request library got an unexpected keyword keyword argument header so basically it's headers not header um that's my bad but we'll run this again and as you can see the error the status code is 200 um, and if you want to Google that, that basically just means that there were no problems. 400 is unauthorized or error. Um, and 200 is success, um, basically. But yeah, so if you get if you get 200, it means that the message did go through. And as you can see here, um, they sent a message saying hello there. And you can do a ton of different things with this. For example, let's say you wanted to make it send multiple messages at once. Um, let's import random as a library um, and let's say we wanted to hmm, let me think all right we'll create a messages list and hello goodbye good afternoon Etc. You can put anything in here. Obviously, I'm just doing this to show you guys what you can do with a lot of different things with this. Um, but we don't need these anymore. These are irrelevant. Um, but so let's say for I in range, and we'll do this ten times. Um, we'll send a message. Okay, and it's going to be doing the same thing, except it's going to be selecting a random message from the messages um, list up here. So um, this is going to be doing this 10 different times. It's, I know it's kind of hard to see because of how small it is, but here, let me drag it out a little bit. So it's going to set, it's going to do the exact same thing, except it's going to do this 10 times and it's going to select a random message from the messages array here. So if you run this, goodbye, goodbye, hello, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. So that's actually pretty strange. I got it four times in a row. I mean, not really considering there's only three different messages, but um, yeah, you can do a ton of different things with this. Obviously, if you want to just send one message, um, you can, but let me set this back to hello. But yeah, you can really do many different things with this. Um, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple concept. But um, if you're trying to get into learning the Discord API or um, Discord.py, this is a good good place to start. Um, obviously, the Discord API and Discord.py are two different things. Discord.py is mainly used for um, actual Discord bots, whereas um, the Discord API is actually used for self bots and um, it is based off the Python request library. Um, but yeah, it is pretty simple. I will put this code down in the description, um, either on GitHub or some other website if you guys want to um, be able to actually try out this code. Um, but uh, yeah, so I hope you all did enjoy the video. Um, if you did, be sure to drop a like comment and subscribe for more daily content on this channel and i will be uploading more um discord python based tutorials in the future so yeah drop a like for those um and i'll see you guys all next time have a nice day